Well, I can now speak with historian and broadcaster Rafe Heidelmanku. Rafe, always a pleasure to have you on GB News. Some people will be rolling their eyes, other people will be throwing their croissants. Here we go again. Everything is racist, this time the countryside. Yeah, I mean, if you ever wanted proof that we're living now in Britain in a post-revolutionary society, where our, our institutions have been completely captured by you know, these sort of ideological apparatchiks who want to transform our country. Well, this this case, I think, is a prime example. You know, the, the trustees of this organization include those who, who work on land justice and decolonizing conservation. So this is not in any way a neutral body. We mustn't think of it like that. It's absolutely rotten and uh, biased to its core. But most stupidly of all, this wildlife and countryside link, the organization that says the countryside is, is a racist, colonial white space, they don't employ a single non-white person. Mm. I, went, I went to their websites, all 11 employees are white. Now, there's nothing wrong with that, of course, unless you're preaching to others for excluding white people. So maybe they want to reflect first on whether they're a colonialist, racist white space before they accuse others of that. And uh, I don't want to stereotype them, but they all seem, seem to be drawn from that same type of pool that we're so familiar with from just of oil protests these are young middle-class university graduates who seem far more to have far more in common with, say, the metropolitan elite than with our country folk. Yeah, and Rafe, I've got to say, when you look at these people, I've never seen more white people in one place than since the Remainer march. And isn't that the point? This is basically privileged white middle-class people, not, not only self-flagellating, but trying to make the rest of us feel guilty about our mere existence. And Rafe, the last time I checked, there are literally no barriers to, to people of colour getting involved in the countryside. Exactly. You know, I mean, they've declared that as a, as a problem, the fact that Britain's green spaces are built with white British cultural values. Well, gosh, you know, I mean, you know, knock, knock me down with a feather. Who could have imagined a nation founded and created by white British people would have white British cultural values? But the fact that they say that strikes at the core of this issue, as you've just said. These race zealots don't care a bit about ethnic minorities. This is about their visceral hatred for Britain and for the West. And the British people are being demoralized in a prolonged sort of war of attrition now from all of our mm. institutions that seek to undermine our culture and our way of life. And, you know, every day it seems almost there's another institution telling the British people, you're racist, your history is racist, your culture is racist, your national heroes are racist, and now even your countryside is racist. And you sort of have to ask, why are they attacking the countryside? Well, it's quite clear. It's because if you're English, Scottish, Welsh, or Northern, I Northern Irish, the countryside defines your identity. When you ask them to think about what England means to an Englishman, mm. they always think about the pastoral landscape of, you know, England's green and pleasant land. It's a deeply important emotional mm. part of our identity, the countryside, and it links us to the nation. And by attacking, by calling the countryside racist, they're directly attacking our sense of nationhood and identity. I think it's very deliberate. And the other point to make is, of course, oh, sorry, I think I've run out of time. <laughs> no, keep going. Yeah, the other point to make, of course, is, you know, my father was is a born in Kenya, uh, Asian Sikh. Uh, once in a while, they'd go for a picnic outside of Nairobi. Uh, but there were very few people doing that like him, and there were no black people doing that. I mean, I've gone, I've, I'm a member of the National Trust still and of the Royal Horticultural Society. I go to ha houses and gardens around the countryside. I've been very interested to see in the last few years, a large number of ethnic minorities are now visiting, mm. but they're Indian, Chinese and Japanese. Black people aren't going out into the countryside, maybe because it's difficult to get out of the cities, but also these are cultural issues within those communities. They may not have the same interest in going out to the countryside. It was reported last year that 95% uh, of black people can't swim. These are cultural issues that have nothing to do with the white population being oppressive, but these are just for the historical or whatever reasons within those communities. They don't have the same interests. Going into the countryside is still primarily a white middle class activity, you know, white working classes are also underrepresented there too. So the idea to try to focus everything on race is so divisive to our society and our culture.
Absolutely. You know, and if you flip the language and play their games, you could say this. Many parts of inner city Britain are black, Asian and Muslim spaces where white people are out of place. Cultural barriers exist which prevent white people engaging with them. They are dominated by non-whites. Now, if I said that, I'd be called a total knuckle-dragging racist. Yet yeah, that's the kind of language that they are using, Rafe. Basically, they are the racists. Rafe Hadelmanku, thank you very much for joining us on the show.